here is a fairly common exam question. I shared it across my social platforms and I got a lot of interesting replies. And by the way, if you want to follow me on other platforms, all links to my social media profiles are in the description below. Anyways, coming back to our question here, we want to find out all compounds that do not superimpose with their own mere reflections. Well, let's check them out one by one and see which fit the criteria for us and which do not. Starting with my molecule A here, there are multiple different ways how we can create a mere reflection to begin with. One potential way would be to reflect the molecule uh, over the vertical line like this. So if this purple line is my mirror plane, then reflecting my molecule over that mirror plane will give me a mirror reflection. And if I do so, I'll get a molecule that looks like this. I could also use the horizontal line as my mirror plane, well in this case, if I were to reflect my molecule over that plane, I would get the following structure. Finally, there is one more way how you can make a mirror reflection, and that would be by taking the plane of paper itself and treating that as a mirror plane. So if my paper itself is a mirror, then in that case I'm just going to be switching my dashes and wedges, giving me a structure that looks like this. Now, the next thing that is super important to understand is what exactly the term superimposable means. When we say that two items or like two molecules in our case are superimposable, that means that one object can be laid over the other one and occupy exactly the same space. Now, let's say I have these two molecules. I have a purple molecule on the left and I have the uh, green molecule on the right. If I took my green molecule and I try to move it on top of my purple molecule, just like that, you can see that they occupy exactly the same space. Everything is identical. OH is looking at me, the rest of the skeleton is the same, so these two objects are, in fact, going to be superimposable. There is also something very important I want to point out. Objects are not fixed in space, they can rotate in space. We can also have free rotation around sigma bonds, which can give us different conformations. That is going to be less applicable for questions of this sort, but nonetheless that is something that you want to keep in mind for more complex uh, type of questions. So in this case, if I wanted to see if my original molecule A that I drew in black is superimposable with one of its mirror images, I would have to grab one of those mirror images and maybe rotate it in space to see if I can make it look exactly like the original one. So, for instance, let's take our purple reflection and we are going to make a copy of this purple reflection so it's a little bit easier for me to manipulate that in space. Now, I'm going to take this molecule and I will simply rotate that in space like so. I know it doesn't look particularly well, but this way we can definitely see that my new purple molecule that I have right over here, slightly rotated in space, is exactly the same as the molecule A, as the original molecule, which means that these two molecules are superimposable. Now, moving on to the next molecule, I'm going to do the same analysis. Of course, I'm not going to draw every possible mirror reflection, I'm just going to do the one. And here I'm going to reflect my molecule over this vertical plane, which would give me a mirror reflection looking like this. These two molecules are also going to be superimposable in space, and I do not need to even rotate them in space in any way or form. But hey, Victor, you might say, look at these two molecules. In one case, we have the wedged chlorine on the right and the dashed chlorine on the left, and in my reflection, I have the wedged chlorine on the left and the dashed chlorine on the right. How come they are the same? Well, one thing that we need to keep in mind is that whenever we are drawing dashes and wedges, they mean that the group is looking directly at the observer and the group on the dash is looking directly away from the observer. So what that means is that whenever we are drawing a molecule with stereochemistry that we are going to be representing with wedges and dashes, well, we simply cannot put both of those groups one in front of the other one. If, let's say, I put something like this, where I have one chlorine looking at me and another chlorine looking away, well, that's a mess. I cannot understand what it is. So what we do in this case we tilt them a little bit to one side or the other side, which means that if I were to draw my drawing where I have my 
chlorine looking at me and chlorine looking away, that would be exactly the same as if I, let's say, wanted to draw this molecule where the dashed one on the right and the wedged one is on the left. Because we remember that dash and wedge means that it looks at you and away from you. And the way we tilt it a little bit in space, that part is irrelevant. Which means that my original molecule and the mirror reflections, they are literally the same thing. They're just drawn in a slightly different fashion. And on top of that, we can also see that the molecule has an internal plane of symmetry. So whenever you have something like that, it is definitely going to be superimposable with its own mirror image. When the molecule is symmetrical by itself, making a mirror image of that molecule is going to produce the same molecule. Now, moving to the next one, this one is definitely an interesting example, and it tripped up quite a few folks out there, so let's look at this one carefully. Now, first of all, as always, I'm going to make a mirror reflection of this molecule, and probably the easiest version here that's going to make sense is to make a mirror reflection where the paper is the mirror itself. So I'm going to draw a schematic mirror plane as such, and then I will draw my molecule, but I will remember to flip all of my dashes and wedges while doing so, which gives me OH on the left that's going to be on the dash, then I have my double bond, then OH on the right, that guy would have to be on the wedge, and then the rest of my molecule, OME, like so. Now, these two molecules are mere reflections of each other. But now, let's do a little trick that I have already done before. I'm going to take my molecule and I'm going to make a copy of that, so I'm going to pull it to the side like that, and now I'm going to take it and rotate it in space by 180 degrees. And what do I get? exactly the same picture that I have on the left, but kind of, you know, upside down a little bit because of, you know, how I physically write my molecule. So you can see that the original molecule and my mirror reflection are exactly the same things. So this means that the molecule is superimposable with its own mirror reflection. Now, next one here. That one is a classic exam trick. The thing is, I have highlighted the stereochemistry of these two methyl groups over here, but that stereochemistry, that dash and wedge representation here is meaningless. The thing is, these two carbons that I have over here, these are not chiral carbons, which means that showing any stereochemistry at this point is quite unnecessary. So to simplify that and to make my life a little bit easier, what I can do, I can redraw this molecule without any stereochemistry. And here it becomes quite obvious that if I were to take this molecule and make a mere reflection of that, well, it's going to be literally the same thing. So let's say I make my mere reflection like that, it's literally the same thing, just upside down. So this one is definitely superimposable with itself. And the next one here is also a classic trick question. So here, if I were to take my mirror reflection, I'm going to do the same trick as I have done with one other molecule uh, that looks kind of similar-ish. I'm going to use the plane of paper itself as my mirror. So that is going to be my plane of mirror, and then when I draw my molecule, when I make this mirror reflection, I will redraw the thing flipping my atoms like so, where I have dash on the left and wedge on the right now. Now, doing my favorite trick here, I'm going to make a copy of this molecule and I'm going to rotate it in space and what do we see? Exactly the same thing as we have on the left. So again, this is a superimposable mirror image. And finally, we have this monstrosity. Well, molecules like that might seem intimidating, but that's nothing more than just an image from the side. If I were to redraw this molecule from up top, then what I would see is a six-membered ring, so I would show it like this with the nitrogen, so that ring is this part over here, so this is my six-membered ring. Then I have a bridge that is looking at me if I'm looking at the molecule from up above, so I will show that bridge on the wedges like so, and I will connect it to the nitrogen, of course, so here we go. Then I have one methyl group over here that is looking away from us, so I will show this 
CH3 on the dash, and I have this second methyl group over here, also looking away from us if we are looking at this molecule from up above. So I will show this guy also here on the dash like that. Now, looking at this molecule, it becomes significantly more manageable to figure out whether that thing is going to be superimposable with its mirror uh, image or not, because now, if, let's say, I draw my mirror image, I can just do a vertical line like before, I will draw my six-membered ring over here, so I've got my nitrogen like so, then I still have my bridge, so I'm going to draw my bridge with the wedges like so, then I have the CH3, now that CH3 is going to be on the left side, and I have another CH3 on the right side like this. So these two guys, no matter how much I rotate them in space, no matter how much I flip them, they will never be able to superimpose in space. They're always going to be different, which means that we have found our non-superimposable mirror image. Stereochemistry questions like that can be a little bit of a challenge, and practice makes it perfect. It can be a little bit frustrating at first, I understand that, trust me, but if you have your molecular model kit, make use of that. We are not born with the 3D imagination, so we have to build it from the get-go, which means that you need to spend as much time as you can to build up the 3D imagination. So get your molecular model kit, or if you don't have one, use like styrofoam balls and uh, toothpicks or something like that to represent molecules, and play with those and help yourself build the 3D imagination. Because once you have your 3D imagination, once you have that mental muscle built up, you will see how easy it will be to rotate this molecule molecules and space, and how easy stereochemistry becomes. So practice, practice, and then practice some more to become comfortable with those. And that's all I have for today. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, you can show it to me by hitting the like button and leaving me a comment below. Subscribe to the channel for daily organic chemistry updates and tutorials. Watch this video next, and I will see you tomorrow.